Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you uh, the five basic text animation skills using Animate CC. Also, I will cover the difference between the classic twin and motion twin. So if you're not sure how to do it before, I hope this video uh, may help you. So let's get started. Okay, so on the first let's create a new document. Uh, so open the Animate CC uh, and then uh, under Web Category, uh, just to choose the low uh, profile, 640 by 480 and frame rate 24 FPR and also um, platform type HTML5 canvas. Okay, so I do not change anything. So create. Okay, so first, so we have the white blank uh, document and I'm going to show you um, text animation, the first one, the moving. So I'm going to show you the difference between classic twin and then uh, motion twin. So let me type something. They're really simple. Um, just capital letter A. Helvetica, bold, and type size, maybe a little bit bigger. 96 is okay, that's the max. Uh, also, yeah, we can enter the uh, any number uh, we want to use. Okay, so first, uh, when you're doing this text animation, I recommend you to break apart, modify and break apart. If you have word, I mean multiple letters, break apart twice because um, by choosing this break apart option, your animation will be getting more smoother and also you can have some more options. So um, that's normally what I do. So first, uh, let me do a um, classic twin. It is under insert menu and create classic twin. And then by default, since our frame rate is 24 frames per second, it uh, is selected a 24 frame segment automatically. And then your playhead is on one second mark on frame number 24 and just to insert to create uh, insert keyframe. If you're working on the lower version of this animate CC, you can go to insert. I mean the um, timeline and keyframe. Either one's fine. Okay. And then we can move it on frame number 24. See, let me hit the return key. So this works. You can insert yeah, your uh, any keyframe in between, anywhere. So place your playhead on frame number 12 or 13, somewhere in the middle, insert a keyframe. See the black dot, meaning there's another keyframe and then I can move it to somewhere else. So this, ha this happens. So this is a classic twin. Okay. Then now let me make any, another new layer on top. I'm going to explain about motion twin. You will see the difference between. Okay. So I will type another one. Maybe this time B. Break apart again. Okay, and then my first keyframe is highlighted, selected, and insert this time motion twin, not classic twin, motion twin. Okay, and let me place my playhead on one second mark and insert a keyframe. Okay, on frame number 24, I'm going to move my letter B to somewhere here okay so it's almost the same result but uh, you see that uh, in motion twin when I move the uh, location of my letter B on frame number 24 you can see the path meaning by moving the placing your mouse cursor on the path you can see the little arc upside down arc next to your mouse cursor you can change the path like that. 
on curve. See? So classic twin, um, you can move it around, but on a straight path. But a motion twin, you can move your uh, object or your text around on the path, curved path like this. Okay, so it's about the moving. Okay, now the second, the scaling, rescaling. Uh, I'm going to do the same way. Let me type again, capital letter A in the middle somewhere. And I'm going to break apart. Okay, I can use either motion twin or classic twin, either one's fine. But uh, since I'm not going to move this letter A on the curve, so I'm going to use this as classic twin. So I'm um, uh, highlight frame number one, my first keyframe, and insert create classic twin and on frame number 24 and one second mark insert a keyframe so we have two keyframes departure and the destination on frame number one okay select your letter a on your stage so click on that two different ways first i'm going to use my free transform tool select it and hold down the shift i can make it bigger so i change the size of my letter a on frame number one frame number 24 is the still same size so this is what happens okay so we can do this another way is let me go back command z on frame number one i select my letter a and then in your another kind of a, uh your the uh, another toolbox there's a transform if you do not see this it is under the windows menu and you can see that transform this one and then transform let me check the link the constraint and I'm going to make it bigger, bigger and bigger. Or let me enter the number 500%. Same result. I use this a lot when I work on the multiple letters. Okay, so this is about the scaling. Now, next one is a fading, fading in or fading out either one okay for the fading i want to have the kind of fading in effect so i'm starting from the nothing and getting smaller and the letter a is going to be the 100 percent kind of alpha value so i can see the letter a clearly so in order to do that select first keyframe now click on your letter a on your stage in your properties panel under object you can see the color effect choose the alpha use this slide bar starting from the hundred percent i mean zero percent of alpha value and ending at a hundred percent of alpha value you can see that so it's a fading in. If you want to add more, for example, on two second mark, I can insert another keyframe. And then I want to make it fading out. So um, plan is fading in. Once it's set to 100%, I want to make it disappear on frame number 48 so select the letter a on your stage on two second mark and alpha value down to zero fading in and out fading in and out in and out also 
on frame number 48 on uh, two second mark, still you can make some changes. You can make it bigger. So watch this. Fading in smaller and getting bigger and fading out. Okay, now rotation. On one second mark here, I want to rotate it. So there are several different ways. Uh, maybe first choice is you can open the, your transform panel again. Let me rotate, for example, 90 degree. 90. And see what happens. Fading in, getting smaller, and rotating, and back. Okay, so we did moving, rescaling, and fading, and rotating. Now let's do a masking. Okay, for the masking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import one photo images for my background. So let me import any images, fine. Uh, I'm going to import the image larger than my stage size. So import the stage, and then... I'm going to import cool background image I downloaded from the web. So which is this. Okay, maybe somewhere here. Okay, so first the thing is, I'm going to um, uh, animate this background, kind of panning. So moving from here to the left side, slowly, just for one second. So um, I'm going to insert create classic twin because I'm just going to move it straight line and on frame number 24 one second mark insert the keyframe and let me move to the left so it's gonna be like this okay okay now let me create the end another new layer on top I'm going to type big letter A. Color doesn't matter. Um, let me break apart. I'm going to make it huge A and center. Okay. So currently what happened is this thing's happening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the, um, the masking effect on my letter A. So that means this animating background will be playing, will be uh, viewed uh, only inside of this letter A. It's like a clipping. So select your letter A, your text layer, hold down the control key, click on this layer 2 icon, choose the mask and play it. That's it. Okay, so uh, we cover the, uh, the really simple uh, the five different skills uh, for the uh, text animation. Um, and if you have any questions or any comments or uh, anything uh, you need to know more, uh, just let me know. And then also next time I'm going to uh, explain about the uh, shape tweening. Okay, thanks for watching and have a good day and be safe and stay healthy. Bye.